Hello, everybody. We need uh, one last bit of new material here before um, that second test. And it was supposed to have been in a lab session last week. But, uh, well, apparently that didn't work. So here it is. Right. First here, let's imagine a story. Okay. You got the Cheerios company. Okay. And here's a quote from them. Lowering your cholesterol is an important step towards reducing your risk of heart disease. Learn what you can do to lower your cholesterol. Okay. Now, they're implying, of course, that if you eat Cheerios, you will decrease your cholesterol and therefore decrease, reduce your risk of heart, uh, heart disease. Okay. Lovely claim. So let's check out this thing. Imagine I wanted to do a, 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 a test of Cheerios claims, okay? Imagine we've got a situation here where we might know the mu and the sigma of the population for cholesterol levels, okay? So we have the average cholesterol of the population. We have the standard deviation of the cholesterol for the population. We will take a sample of 20 people and we will assign them to eat nothing but Cheerios. Okay, hopefully this is starting to sound like a familiar Z-test. And so cholesterol will be measured 60 days after eating Cheerios. And so let's take a look. Hopefully this is familiar by now. Um, this is a one-tailed test, right? Because Cheerios wants to, to demonstrate that it lowers cholesterol, right? Not increases or something like that. So it's one-tailed. And so the all uh, remember, remember to think about these hypotheses. It makes more sense to think about the alternative first. So the alternative hypothesis: the average cholesterol level after eating Cheerios will be less than the average cholesterol for the entire population that has not eaten Cheerios. Okay. Whereas the null hypothesis has to remember include every other possible outcome. So the mean cholesterol after eating Cheerios is either higher than the average or exactly equal or higher than the population or exactly equal to. Okay? In other words, putting these into words, right? The null hypothesis simply says eating Cheerios does not lower cholesterol and the alternative says eating Cheerios does lower cholesterol. Okay. So now when we make our statistical decision making, okay? Now, I'm not doing it for this example, but clearly, it, you know, we would take the sample average, we would calculate the um, standard error of the mean, we would use that to calculate the Z test, we would have a critical value of Z and create a region of rejection and make a decision. We're going to do some practice on this still, don't worry. You'd have a region of rejection, and you'd, in, you, you'd look at it and say, does the obtained z-score I got from this sample of Cheerios eaters fall in the region of rejection or not? And then we make a decision about rejecting the null or failing to reject the null. Okay? So now, when we make these decisions, there are errors that we'll be making that can be made. Okay? And they have, unfortunately, not very clever names. Type 1 and type 2 errors. A type 1 error occurs if, here we go, we reject a true null hypothesis. In other words, Cheerios, in fact, does nothing, but we accidentally come to a conclusion that it does something. A type 2 error is if we fail to reject a false null. Okay? Cheerios actually works, but we conclude it does not work. Okay, so these two errors can occur if we, you know, in different situations. So let's talk about these errors a little bit. Errors. Errors. There it is. So now, oh, I already said that. Okay, how can a type one error uh, occur? What, what's the likely things? Let's say. Uh, let me think quick. I'll give you the answer to this. Type one error. Cheerios does nothing, but we conclude it does. Okay, let's say we, we you know, we gave this group of, of people Cheerios for 60 days and their cholesterol was lower. And so we said, hey, reject the null. Cheerios lowers cholesterol. Lovely. But guess what might have happened? It's possible that the reason, the reason that cholesterol is lower is not because Cheerios lowers cholesterol, 
But instead, that group that ate Cheerios also stopped eating ham and bacon, okay, and eggs, and all this other stuff for breakfast. And it was the the skipping of the other really bad food that led to the lower cholesterol. But I mistakenly said, reject and no, Cheerios lowers cholesterol, okay? And so all of a sudden, in this type of an error, what's going to happen is I'm going to make false claims. Uh, people are going to waste money. Imagine if this false claim was in terms of a, of, of a new cancer drug or something. My drug cures cancer, but it's not. It's a type 1 error. And all of a sudden, all kinds of desperate people will be spending all kinds of money on a drug that doesn't do anything. Okay, So that's really what a type 1 error comes down to. In a type 2 error, we fail. Let's say Cheerios does lower cholesterol, but we get to the end of our study and we run our test and we find, oh, we conclude the average cholesterol of the people with Cheerios is no different from the average cholesterol of those without Cheerios. We fail to reject the null, Cheerios does nothing. And now, given this scenario, this could happen pretty easily if, say, for example, you had people that were motivated, let's say, motivated, because these people, they realize, ooh, this is a cholesterol study. They're taking the Cheerios, but you know what they're also doing? They're like, I'm going to start my exercise routine. Now is a good time, right? Since I'm, I'm trying to kick off the cholesterol. There we go. And so, no, wait a minute. That wouldn't be it. Oh, my bad. Cut all of that. It goes like this. It's the type 2 error where um, we conclude... Wait. Fails to reject. Okay. We conclude Cheerios does nothing when it actually does. Okay. Imagine this is a scenario that what happens is people that have relatively high cholesterol are the ones that volunteer for your study because they desperately need it. Okay. And so what happens is their cholesterol was high to begin with. And when they take the Cheerios for 60 days, their high cholesterol comes down to the average. And so now all of a sudden you say, the meat, you know, the average cholesterol after eating Cheerios is exactly the same as the as the average cholesterol with no Cheerios. Cheerios doesn't do anything. Yes, it did, right? Their cholesterol was high to begin with. You truly did. You brought them down from high to average. You did a good deal with this. Cheerios truly does it. And so this type of an error, it, it, again, in given something like a drug study, can have the the cost of missing out on very valuable treatments. You've lost a drug which could save lives or reduce symptoms or make people's lives better and you've missed it. Okay, so you throw out a potentially useful informative drug. And so this is a little chart that helps us to understand all of the possible outcomes. So now you're gonna have to get your brain a little bit relaxed here for a second. Along the left, we have what's called a type 1 and a type 2 situation, okay? Okay, in fact, let me step back. Your job as a scientist is to discover the truth of the world. Now, the problem is you don't know the truth of the world. Of course you don't. That's why you're trying to discover it. That's why you're doing research. That's why you're running this little test to find out if Cheerios lowers cholesterol. You don't, in fact, know if Cheerios lowers cholesterol. Your job is to perform some research and make the best guess you can about whether Cheerios does or does not lower cholesterol. But ultimately, this thing along the left, the truth about nature, you never, ever know. Okay? Along the top are the two different choices we can make. Reject and all, fail to reject and all. Okay? Now, if we reject and all, and we are, let's, let's just keep it simple and go to the top right box. Let's say we fail to reject the null, and you're in a type 1 situation. In the type 1 situation, the um, null is true. There is nothing to be found. You fail to reject the null. Good job. Okay? You did it properly. The bottom left box. Okay? You're in a type 2 situation. The null is false. There is something to be found. Okay? And you do, in fact, reject the null. That's good. That's a correct rejection. 
later on in your career you're going to find out that this is a very important corner here this word power will show up in your experimental class over and over and over very very big idea okay so we see the top right and the bottom left you've made good choices good decisions but what about these other two okay if you have a type one situation the null is true there is no effect to be found you reject the null you say I think there is an effect that's a type one error and in the bottom corner there that there is something there it truly makes a difference Cheerios lowers cholesterol etc but you fail to reject the null and do not find it that's a type 2 error well what we find is that here is the layout and you can you can look at this one yourself now that we've talked about the Cheerios example but here is here is the um, this chart in terms of our Cheerios example okay you know no relationship exists Cheerios does not etc etc okay so you can look at this one we find that this notion of and remember we're talking about statistical decision making so we're using statistics to help us make decisions to guide our decisions okay and so imagine you've got a cancer doctor an oncologist an oncologist's job is to basically look at um, a skin a, a cell sample and um, figure out whether or not it is cancerous okay and so look at this the the cancer doctor the oncologist's job is to figure out what the truth is again the cancer doctor has no idea walking in whether you do or do not have cancer their job is to make the best guess they can about whether you do or do not have cancer and so we find the same thing we find if you know there is no cancer in truth the doctor says I don't see any cancer that's a correct decision everybody's happy go to the bottom left there is in fact cancer the doctor says yes there's cancer it's called a hit correct treatment huh? but then you go to the type 1 error in the top box top top left and what you find is there is no cancer but they say "Ooh, I think there's cancer that's a false alarm and false alarms can be expensive it's unnecessary treatment okay and so all of a sudden you don't have cancer but you're getting all of the cancer treatment it costs you a lot of money it really can't be good for your body to to be subjected to all of that right so there is a real cost to that however if you got onto the bottom and there is in fact cancer and the doctor says I don't see cancer that's called a miss and you have a dead patient so these these ideas are not just you know related to some statistics obscure statistics lecture these are real life in fact look at this this is this is a really weird example just to show you that this is really really real imagine you're walking in the woods right you're just taking a hike going through the trail and out of the corner of your eye you see something okay you just see something and you're like oh my god is that a snake okay and so either it is or is not a snake all right or top no snake or yes snake right it either is or isn't you make a decision that it either is or isn't okay and so let's take a look at the uh, the different outcomes here again it is not a snake you conclude it's no snake good job you have a nice hike you there it is a snake you conclude it's a snake you jump you get to safety great how about a type 1 error there is no snake but you conclude there is a snake a false alarm you jump you look stupid you waste a little energy no problem you there is a snake but you conclude it is not a snake that is that type 2 error and guess what happens the snake bit you in the ass and you're dead okay so clearly these different errors um, have different costs okay and this is one of um no not this one this one this is one of my favorites that I like um because I'm not political but we're getting up on November so maybe I'll be a little political so we find that at the polling station the poll workers job is in fact to determine whether or not there's a legal voter or not okay and so at when a voter comes in to vote they either are a legal voter 
or they are an illegal voter. It is one of those two situations. The poll worker can make two decisions. They can reject ballots or retain ballots. Okay? And so what we find is, again, I mean, if it's a legal voter and they retain the ballot, good. That's how voting is supposed to work. If it's an illegal voter and they reject the ballot, great. They caught, uh, they caught voting fraud. Okay? But what about the other two? If it is a legal voter and they reject the ballot, that is voter disenfranchisement. And in the bottom right, if it's an illegal voter and they retain the ballot, that's voter fraud. Okay? So we find that the type 1 error and the type 2 error are, you know, are real world consequences. Now, if this was an experimental class, I would talk in greater detail about the relationship between these errors, between the type 1 and the type 2, type 2 errors, because these are not independent of each other. They're highly dependent on each other. In fact, all four of these outcomes in this box here are highly related to each other. And so at some point, you know, you'll, you'll be learning about different experimental methodologies that you can do to manipulate the probabilities of these different outcomes occurring. Okay? So we have that so that you can have all the fresh material for that exam too.